On a pristine island off East Arnhem Land, an eco-resort offers guests a chance to turn back the clock. They can grab a book with a sun deck and relax. And they, from their rooms, they have a look at the Western Bay and it's absolutely stunning and you've got it to yourself. Banu Banu is run by a husband and wife team, Helen Martin and Trevor Hosey. It's an indigenous owned business that employs local workers. I'm actually an Aranda woman. I'm from Central Australia, and uh, I'm here on Yulnu land doing business. And, and my husband's relationship goes as far back as 1982 with the local Yulnu community. So our typical guests are the uh, high-end market group from Sydney, Melbourne, the East Coast. We get people come in and we say a minimum of two nights, and two nights, three days, really does feel like two weeks. Oh, Euro is so qualified as far as the bush foods and native foods and able to, to relate to all the different, you know, what the medicinal purposes of a bush plant, which is great. You prepare that then, what do you do? Just get the juice out of it or squeeze the, juice, the medicine that you use for for eyes? For eyes. Can sting. Yeah, yeah. It'll go. The community can offer um, traditional um, spear fishing, crabbing. The ladies can do arts and crafts, shell painting, basket making and weaving. There's a lot of um, bush foods on the island. The space is found over on the other, other beach. It's just a... We're starting to bring bush food into our menu here in our, at the restaurant. Helen originally cooked meals, but has recently hired a head chef. Our chef uses pig face off the beaches here. Salty sort of flavour, like a mini, mini bean. It just balances out the flavours. It's got a really nice crunchy texture and it just adds to the whole dish. It's highly recommended. It's definitely unique. We were just saying there's nothing else like this around here at all. And yeah, it's taken it to the next level. Some lovely fresh calamari and some burgers and fish and, chips. and, fish and chips. This was our original beach camp. We actually did start with uh, literally a shed and a sink. So my husband and I came to Bremer Island in 2005 to start up a, a fishing camp and that's how we started. And it was a small business. It was just like a lifestyle business. Catering mainly to locals, the business grew steadily until the couple had an idea for an upmarket wilderness retreat. So in 2017, I had the vision of a resort, but we needed a million dollars. You need infrastructure, and in remote locations, it's obviously uh, very costly. So as a small business and operating on Aboriginal land, uh, getting finance from the bank was just so hard. The only way we could do it was through IBA, and IBA have supported us so much through financial and also just good business advice. We have two seasons. We have a high season where we get guests come in and they have the retreat exclusively to themselves. And then we've got a low season when we get the local market coming across. They'll come over, bring their own boats over or we, we transfer them across in our boat. They'll have a day at the beach, come up and have lunch here, a swim in the pool. Sea turtles nest on Bremer Island. During the breeding season, females climb the beach to lay their eggs. We've got four species, they're endangered, and it's great for tourists to come and have a look and actually be able to, to see this in the still natural environment. However, plastic washing onto nearby beaches is a major threat. With every high tide, it's just dropping more and more rubbish, and it's, it's beyond us, it really is. It's upsetting, what, what do you do? 
It's already a disaster. It's enough rubbish to go around to sink an island. We've had a few turtles wash up in drift nets. There's lots of, lots of plastic that goes through turtles. We've been trying to tackle the situation through working in with the local Dimaru land, Aboriginal Land Management Group. They'll help clean up the beaches with us. It's actually groundbreaking. It's, it is setting a trend. It's leading the way to show that uh, our mob, our people can be very proud of their culture, that they can show it to the world and the world will love it. After overcoming many challenges, Helen and Trevor are finally living the dream. When we first started off 15 years ago, I would never have imagined to be where we're sitting today. We are so proud of it. Just to have a restaurant that could seat 30 to 40 people for lunch, having a penthouse and five beachfront rooms, on the, it's just amazing. At the end of the day, when we've had a really busy day with guests visiting, my husband and I actually go up and sit up on our deck by the pool and have a nice glass of wine and just watch the sunset and we feel like we are the luckiest business people in the world. <laughs> this is gold. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.